I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're talking about 32 kilohertz gyro sampling. This is a new feature in Betaflight, uh, Betaflight 3.2, and it's something that Raceflight was the first to really make a big deal out of. Uh, today I'm going to tell you what 32 kilohertz sampling is, why it's like potentially the biggest thing ever, and also why it doesn't really matter at all. <laughs> Let's start by talking about sampling rate and, and what the effect of sampling rate is. Uh, and intuitively speaking, sampling rate is it's how often you check the sensor to see what the thing that's being sensed is doing. So for example, if you're driving a car uh, and you're steering the car to keep the car on the road, we might say that the sampling rate is how often you look up from your freaking cell phone to see if the car is still driving. You don't do that. And if you don't look often enough, something will happen while you're not looking the car will crash. So it makes sense that you have to sample at least like fast enough that you can respond to things that are happening in the real world. Well, it turns out that there's a mathematical definition for how fast you need to sample data. And it's something called the Nyquist limit. Uh, Nyquist is the name of a guy and he wrote about the Nyquist limit. It's named after him. Uh, we should also remember Claude Shannon. It's Shannon worked with Nyquist and we always talk about the Nyquist limit, but it's really the Shannon Nyquist. Anyway, Never mind. <laughs> the Nyquist limit says that if you've got a signal and it's got a whole bunch of different frequencies in it, like a classic example is, is an audio file, just a, an MP3 or something. In order to accurately record the information about that signal without distortion, you need to sample at two times the frequency of the highest frequency that's in the signal. So going back to your to your MP3 or whatever, that's why when they when they defined the sound format for a CD, they said what's the highest frequency that humans are really capable of hearing and they decided that was about 22 kilohertz. And that's why a CD samples at 44 kilohertz, 44.1 kilohertz, because that's how fast you have to sample to accurately record without distortion a 22 kilohertz signal. And now those of you who are audiophiles will now fill up my comments section telling me why 44 kilohertz is actually no good and and records sound better. And, oh, let's not even go there. But it can be mathematically proven and shown that in order to sample accurately, you need to sample at twice the frequency of the highest frequency in the data. And that's the reason why faster gyro sampling doesn't freaking matter. Because if you look at the data coming out of the gyro in black box, you will see that there's a big spike of information down below about 50 hertz, and that is the actual motion of the quadcopter. That's down below about 50 hertz. Uh, and then somewhere around 250 to say 550 hertz, uh, you'll see a big spike of, of energy from the motors, the motors, and, and the, exactly where that spike is depends on how fast your motors are spinning, what their KV is, what props you're running, all those things. But it's on a five inch, six inch, four inch mini quad, whatever, it's usually between about 250 and 550 hertz. And then above 250 to 550 hertz, there's nothing. The energy just tapers off to nothing. By one kilohertz, there's just no energy whatsoever. So if sampling at around two kilohertz is enough to satisfy the Nyquist limit for our for our quadcopters, then why are we also, well, we were running at eight kilohertz now and we're starting to get excited about running at 32 kilohertz later. There is in fact a really exciting reason to do that. And it goes back to this post on RC Groups by Saxon. Uh, and he talks about the difference between a causal filter and a non-causal filter. And what he says boils down to this. A causal filter does not depend on any information about the future state of the system. And you might say, well, how could a filter know anything about the, I mean, we haven't invented time travel, right? But if you think about, think, we're, for a real-time system, we're gonna be typically working with causal filters, uh, but for a non-real-time system, like if you're just working with your with your audio editing program and you wanna apply some kind of a low-pass filter to it, well, that, that program can look at the whole track. So if it wants to look into the future, it just looks a few samples ahead in the track and it applies the filter. Non-causal filters have some performance advantages that we would like to take advantage of, but since we're working in a real-time system where we can't look into the future, 
How can we take advantage of those? And it turns out that you can turn a causal filter into a, or a non-causal filter into a causal filter, and here's how you do it. Let's say you're, you know, you're right here at time zero, and you need information about like five samples into the future in order for your filter to do its magic, wonderful things. Well, all you have to do is just wait five sample times, right? And now you have all that information that you needed and your filter can do its thing. But you have to delay the output of the filter by five sample times, okay? And that's the advantage of the faster sampling rates. When you delay the output of the filter, bad things happen. We need the output of these filters. We need to get the data from the gyro through the PID loop to the motors as fast as possible. The less delay, the better. And that's why we can get things like great prop wash handling and a really connected on rails feel. And when you sample at a faster rate, the delay to turn the, the non-causal filter into a causal filter is less. So you can use these more sophisticated filters and that require you to delay the output and the amount of delay that you get is, is, is low enough to be acceptable. And that brings us to the other question, which is, should you use 32 kilohertz sampling in Betaflight? Uh, and I think the answer to that is no. And the reason is that when you go for, uh, to a higher sampling rate, you also get different, you, you increase the noise floor, you're getting more of the signal, but you're also getting more of the noise. And if you don't have filters designed specifically to deal with that situation, basically eight kilohertz filters aren't gonna work as well at 32 kilohertz. You need, you need those sophisticated filters by the time you go to 32K. And since Betaflight doesn't have those yet, I think most people get a worse experience by enabling 32K, not better. If you compare that to something like Race Flight 1, which was designed from the ground up to work with 32K, people flying Race Flight 1 are having pretty good experience for the most part at 32 kilohertz sampling. That's going to do it for today. Hope this was educational. If any of that didn't make sense, leave questions down in the comments. As always, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and happy flying.